Hello, Collective Worship again. It's time to start and time for a prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you that whenever we turn to you, we know that you're always there. We know that you're with us all of the time and that your love for us never fails. Please help us now as we think about a really important time in Jesus' life to learn from you and for our hearts to be warmed by your love. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, today we are thinking about something called Maundy Thursday. I think for a long time I've always felt it's a bit of an odd name, isn't it? More, and I know that some people get a bit stuck and it sounds like you're saying Monday and Thursday at the same time, but it's not Monday, it's Maundy. Um, and it's an old word, uh, which comes from some French, which was mandé, are you impressed? And a bit of Latin mandatum, which was all about a command. And so Maundy Thursday is a day for remembering a command of Jesus. And the particular command that Maundy Thursday remembers is the command to love one another. Jesus said to his disciples in John chapter 13, uh, love one another. By this will all people know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. Love one another as I have loved you. It's a great command. And what happens in John chapter 13, and this is one of the things that is remembered particularly on Maundy Thursday, is that Jesus, having a meal with disciples, uh, gets, a, gets an apron around him gets a bowl of water and he washes his disciples' feet. Now, can you imagine that? You're sitting in a room having, having a meal and the person who is your leader does the job that the most humble of servants in those days would have to do. It's an amazing thing to do. I know once... Uh, my shoelaces were undone. This is a different thing, but my shoelaces were undone. And an old, an, a, a man who was a lot older than I was noticed it. I was sitting down at the time and he just got down, knelt down and tied my shoelaces up. It was a strange and wonderful, very humbling experience because it was just such a kind thing to do. Now this is just an amazing thing of the disciples. We know the disciples find it a little bit awkward because Peter says, well, if you're going to wash my feet, wash all of me. He doesn't quite know what to say. But Jesus is giving them a real example of how to love one another. He is obviously ready to serve his disciples, to show kindness to his disciples. To show humility in front of his disciples. And that's what he wants them to do and how he wants them to live. So one part of Maundy Thursday is to remember how Jesus served his disciples and how he gave them a command to love one another as he had loved them. Uh, and that's one strand. The other strand which is also amazing, is also about the meal. And uh, remember, this is taking place in a week leading up to Jesus dying on the cross. So you've looked at Palm Sunday, Jesus riding into Jerusalem. And then he spends some time teaching people, comes to the end of the week, Thursday, and he has this special meal with his disciples, they would be expecting what the Jewish people grew up with, which is a Passover meal with lamb and bitter herbs and unleavened bread and retelling the story of how the people of Israel came out of Egypt and God miraculously helped them escape and brought them out and sent them towards the promised land and looked after them. Uh, and that meal was an important thing. It was a big family thing. It was a big national thing but this time Jesus is having a different sort of meal and I can't imagine what the atmosphere would be like the disciples must have known something was in the air because they knew Jesus was in danger they knew some people were opposed to him they knew some people didn't like what he was saying 
but still he has this meal with them. But instead of telling the story that they all knew about the Passover and about people being rescued from Egypt, he tells them about the bread. This is my... Imagine saying, it's giving out the bread for everybody. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Eat bread to remember it's like my body. I have given my body for you. Of course, he hasn't died yet, but he's preparing them with a meal to remember him by. And in the same way, he says, it gives them the wine to drink, which they would have had as part of the meal. It wasn't unusual in those days. In fact, it was safer to drink wine than it was water. <laughs> um, but he gives them the wine normally part of the Jewish Passover meal, but now they're going to drink it. And he says, drink this in remembrance of me. This is my blood shed for you. And he, he's telling them that also in this blood is forgiveness for many. Uh, so bread and wine are given to be part of a meal to, me to remember that Jesus gave his body his life and shed his blood on a cross for the sake of the world for our forgiveness and it was the start of something that we still do in churches across the world all of the time people call it different things some people call it the lord's supper remembering the meal side of things some people call it holy communion remembering that we're having friendship closeness to god that's what communion means some people call it the Eucharist, which is a word which means giving thanks, giving thanks that Jesus gave his life for us. Some people call it the Mass, uh, which again meant being sent out to let people know the good news of this love. But this is what Jesus started on the Thursday before he, uh, before he died, which has come to be known as Maundy Thursday. So two strands, two things to remember, two really important things. Jesus leaving a command to love him, love love one another. Uh, love one another as he told us to do. Uh, and one rem telling us to remember him by taking bread and wine together. It's something his disciples never forgot and something which is easy to remember. He gave his body, he shed his blood for our sake. On the cross. Maundy Thursday. Let's say a prayer to join in Jesus' command and remembering what he did for us. Heavenly Father, thank you for the command that Jesus left behind to love one another as he has loved us. And I pray, dear Lord, that you help us to love one another. Sometimes that's difficult. Sometimes that's easy, but help us, dear Lord, to learn how to just notice what other people might need. Notice when they do need a helping hand. Notice when they're upset. Notice when we need to be patient instead of grumpy. Help us, dear Lord, to learn what it means to love one another. And thank you, Lord Jesus, that you left this celebration of bread and wine. Remember that you gave your life for us on the cross. Lord, we thank you that you love us, but help us never just take it for granted, but to be genuinely thankful for all that you went through for our sake. In Jesus' name, Amen. Then let's say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And the peace of God that passes all understanding, 
Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us now and always.